React is a modern library. And that means when we write our app in React, we are making use of the modern features like ES6 module systems, promises, and other awesome features in JavaScript. We are also able to utilize the packages registered on NPM. And that means we can leverage on the open source packages created by some other developers to speed up our app development process. However, there are a few implications here that we need to consider. Number one, we need to find a way to load all the files from our project to the browser, and also including all the NPM packages that we have installed for the project. This is not a big problem for modern browsers that supports ES6 features. However, it will be a massive problem for Stone Age browsers like Internet Explorer. Seriously guys, make the world a better place by stop using Internet Explorer. Anyway, to add all the modules and dependencies into our browser, we'll need to carry out an operation called bundling. Bundling simply means that to combine all the files in our project into few files and load these files into the browser. This process is very similar to bundling items in real life, except that we're bundling files rather than items in our web app. Now to bundle files, we need a bundler. There are a lot of bundlers out there in the wild, and I would say the most popular ones at the time of recording this video are Webpack, Vit, and Rollup. The official bundler of React is Webpack, but in this tutorial series, I'm going to use Vit because I like Vit better. I'll show you how to set up a React project using Vit later. But for now, let's discuss the next problem, where the modern features of JavaScript are not supported in all the browser, like the bloody Internet Explorer. To address this issue, modern bundler will typically perform something called transpilation on our code. Transpiling simply means that to convert our modern JavaScript code base into something that's compatible with Internet Explorer, so our code can run in that abomination. You also probably will hear about the word polyfilling, which simply means adding the necessary code to our code base so that a certain modern feature will work in an older browser. For example, if we want to use promises in Internet Explorer 6, we need to polyfill first before our code can work in that thing. Now, the question is, what would be the typical way to do transpilation? Fret not, the JavaScript community got our back. There is an amazing JavaScript transcompiler called Babel that will do all the hard work for us. And it can be integrated seamlessly into Webpack or Vite. Now typically, if you're setting it from scratch, you might want to do a few configurations, which could be quite scary for beginners. But fortunately, if you're starting a React app in the official way, all these configurations have already abstracted away from you. So you don't really need to touch anything, and you're going to have a working bundler and Babel ready to go. All right, so that's a high-level explanation on a bundler and transcompiler. Let's go to our code now and look at how we can set up a brand new React project using Vite. Vite actually provides us an easy way to scaffold a fresh React project. We'll go to our terminal and type in npn create vite add latest and our project name at the end. This command will magically execute a script to create the necessary files and folders for us to start a brand new React project. Once the command is completed, let's cd into our project directory and type in npn install to install all the dependencies. Once that's done, let's open our project folder in VS Code. And now as you can see here, we've got quite a few scary things going on here. Let's go through the files together one by one, and hopefully you're no longer shitting your pants after that. All right, first and foremost, we have vid.config.js here. This is where we define all the configurations for vid to build and bundle our app. And as you can see here in the file, vid has provided us a plugin called React that extracted away most of the configuration logic into the React plugin, so that we don't need to sweat the details. You can put in a lot of other configuration options here inside the define config function if you want to customize the behavior of Vite. Feel free to consult documentation for that. But for most cases, we don't need to touch a single thing inside this file. Next, let's go to our package.json. And here, as you can see, we've got a very clean package.json as our starting point. Vite does provide us a few handy scripts which we can use for development and production purposes. The dev script is the main command that we'll be using in our development. It will start a hot reload server that will listen to all the changes that we have in our project. 
and magically update the DOM force. You'll see how it works later. The build script is where we tell Vite to build our app. So Vite will compile all the assets in our project into files that are optimized for production. We only need this command when we are ready to deploy our app. Now the preview script will start a web server in your local machine for you to preview your production build. Everyone that's connected to the same Wi-Fi will have access to this web server. It is a quick and easy way for you to share your website with your friends and family. Next, let's take a look at the index.html. This is the main entry point of our website. It is just a simple HTML that contains one div with an ID of root and also a script tag linked to the main JSX file inside our source folder. So the idea is simple. The JavaScript inside the main JSX file will build and mount the React app into this div with the ID of root. And now at this point, you might be wondering what the hell is JSX? Why don't we use JS file? You see, the notion of JSX is a special kind of syntax that allows us to write HTML-like code in JavaScript. The X in JSX stands for XML, which means it is a mix of JavaScript code and XML. And XML is a superset of HTML, and that means we can write our own custom HTML tag in React. If you're confused at this point, don't worry, I promise it will be clearer later on. The takeaway here is that if you name your file as JSX, VS Code can offer a better auto-completion and syntax highlighting to you. All right, now let's take a look at the main JSX file. And as you can see here, it's a normal JavaScript file, but with a twist. There are two things that I need you to take note of. First of all, we are seeing custom XML tags inside our JavaScript code. So the XML tags from line 7 until 9 are exactly what I was talking about earlier. This is JSX, the mixing of JavaScript code and XML tags. And you can see that we are importing a custom HTML element on line 3 and use it on line 8. Now the second thing that I need you to take note of is that on line 4, we are importing a CSS file. This is not possible on vanilla JavaScript. However, since we are using a bundler like vid, it is now possible for us to import all the asset files including CSS and images into our JavaScript code. Importing a CSS file has the same meaning of loading a CSS inside the head tag in our HTML. So the benefit of importing CSS file in our JavaScript is that we can keep our HTML file very clean and write modular code. Later on in the series, I'll show you all the best practices for us to write a maintainable and modular code base. Now the last thing that I want you to take note on is that on line 6, we are simply calling the create root function from the React DOM module. By reading this code, I bet you, you can kind of understand what's going on here. So this line of code is essentially telling React to use the element with the ID of root as the base or the root of the entire app. And then we'll go ahead and call the render function to mount whatever we pass in into the argument of the render function into the React root. Don't worry about the strict mode custom element for now, and we'll go straight into the app custom element. We'll talk more about the strict mode later on in the series. Anyway, you can control click or command click if you're on Mac into the app custom element, and VS Code will bring us straight to the file. And here we see quite a lot of scary things again. Don't shit your pants just yet. Do it after we have completed the lesson. So what's going on here? This file contains only one function, which is the app function, and we are exporting the function out as a default export. This function is something what we call as a React component. Don't worry about the details and implementation in this component just yet. We'll zoom out a bit and look at the big picture. So this function is simply returning us a lot of HTML code. And this HTML code is the content of this component. So that means when we load the app component in the main JSX file, what React will do behind the scene is to replace the app custom HTML tag with whatever HTML we have returned in our app component. We can create as many components as we like in a React project and load them one within the other. So that means I could write another custom component and load it inside our app component and the process goes on. So the main thing here that I need you to understand is that when you're writing an app in React, you should really think in terms of components. You could write components called round button, cards, heading, and so on and so forth. Anyway, we'll talk more about them in the upcoming videos. For now, let's try to run our app. We'll go to our terminal and run npm run dev. 
to trigger the development script. And you should see this default page showing up in the browser. If not, that means you have f***ed up somewhere. And I want to show you one last thing before we end the lesson. Remember the hot reload server that I was talking about just now? Let me demonstrate it to you now. As soon as I make some changes in our source code, we can see the changes applied to the DOM almost immediately without me refreshing the browser page. And this is the voodoo magic of hot module reload, HMR for short. Alright, key takeaways for this lesson. Bundler like Webpack or Vid compiles or bundle our project files and they'll take care of file imports and optimization so we don't need to sweat the details. They both transpile and polyfill our code base so our app can be compatible in all the browser like Internet Explorer. JSX syntax allows us to write XML in JavaScript code. Hot module reload or HMR magically updates the browser on file changes. React is a great library, so don't shit your pants. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.